Welcome everyone. Now we are almost through with uh, journal, journal with GST. Now we are going to enter a new segment which is called the subsidiary books of journal, a subsidiary journals. Now all of you, you know, go to school, you have various subjects to study. So you have English, Hindi, accounts, maths, economics, commerce, everything, right? Now, so you go to school, suppose you just carry one notebook every day. And whatever you learn, the different chapters, different classes, you note down, you know, in that book only, right? So that is what is your journal, right? Every day's work, all in one place, right? Next day you go, next day again, you continue writing. Now, of course, when after five days, Maybe I feel like seeing, you know, what I all have I done in maths? What do I do? I will have to, you know, read right from the beginning till the end, all five days work and find out where all I have done the sums on maths, right? This is just five days. Imagine this you have to do for 50 days, three months, a year. Oh, a difficult task, right? Same thing happens with businesses, journal. Journal records all, I stress on that, all transactions, right? So right from day one till the day end, meaning all 365 days, journal will record everything in one place. And imagine for finding out, suppose I just want to know, you know, how much, you know, did I uh, sell on credit, okay? How many times, how frequently? <clears throat> I will have to pick up all the transactions of sale of credit sale of goods right from you know April to March from the journal and it's such a cumbersome thing. So now simplify that. Now this happens really it, become, it can be very messy in case of big organizations where there are so many transactions in a day. So to simplify it, what have we done? We have bifurcated. We have you know, divided the journal into various specialized books, which are called subsidiary books of journal. So, each book will deal with a different type, a typical type of transactions only. And we will not record everything and you know anything there. Right? So, this, this is basically to simplify the journal, to reduce its you know voluminous bulkiness, uh, you know, by when we just record everything in one place. So we don't want that. We've done away with that. Okay, so now these are the different types, you know, subsidiary books. All oh, these are journals. Okay. So if this is journal, this is like, you know, like ducks and ducklings, these are like journalings. Babies hmm? of journals or divisions of journals. So itne sare journal hai hamare paas. What would cash book record? Cash book would record all the cash and bank related transactions. Okay. So we have it there, everywhere. Now whether you pay for an expense or you purchase goods or you sell goods for cash or you purchase an asset. If there is a cash transaction, it will be recorded in cash book. Next. Purchase book. Purchase book will record only, only credit transactions and that of goods alone. So these two words are the key words here. Credit purchase of goods only. No cash purchases because cash purchases will be recorded in cash book. It will record only credit purchase of goods, not assets. Okay, very, very important. Assets can also be purchased on credit, but we will not record it here. We just want how much goods have we purchased, eh? purchased on credit. That is recorded in purchase. Similarly, sales book records only credit sale of goods. Okay, so we can sell assets, we will not record it here. And we can sell goods for cash, which will be recorded in cash. Okay. Purchase return and sales return. So purchase return book will record the returns of uh, purchase we make to our suppliers. We have returned those goods. Return outward. We can call this return outward book as also. And sales return is return inward. Because who is returning the goods? My customer. So I will record all those transactions in the returns book. Fine. Then. Here we have, Asha, I miss this penny cash book, meaning a smaller cash book to record the day-to-day -day chuta moda expenses of you know, the business. Okay, so that then we will come to it when we do cash book. Bills payable and bills receivable book. And this is another concept. 
when I sign a bill, a document. A bill is a document right now, you just understand that this is a different chapter, we'll deal with it differently later on. Now, for now, we just need to understand. Bill payable, something I have to pay, it's a liability form, right? So, my creditors, who are the creditors? People from whom I buy on credit. So, then if I give in writing that, okay, I will pay you such and such amount after two months, three months, whatever, a specified period. That is called a bill. Fine. So it's a liability. So it's for my creditors. Similarly, bills receivable. So bills receivable. Who will give me money? My debtor. My debtor has given me a signed bill. So that is a bill receivable for me. It's a proof for me that okay, he is going to pay me such and such amount after a specified period which is mentioned in the bill. Fine. It's an asset to me. Now these two books will specifically record all the bills receivable and payable transactions separately. Okay. Now, even after having so many books, there be as a good bajja that is what he be fit me on those transactions. Okay. Like credit sale of asset, credit purchase of asset. There are certain opening entries. Okay. And certain uh, adjusting entries, rectifying entries. There's an error there. Where do you rectify it? I cannot rectify it anywhere here. I have to record it here. Bad debts, written off. Okay. So those entries are you know the residual entries. All those will find the place in another book which is called journal proper. Okay. So now we have all these subdivisions here marked for you. Now we will go one by one and study them in detail. They just have a different format. They are called very date wise. You know, we have to specify what the transactions are happening and that makes our job easy, right? So all set. So in today's video, we will specifically throw the spotlight on purchase book. Get ready. Now this, this meaning not just the purchase book, all the subsidiary books are the, you know, one of the easiest part of the entire class 11 syllabus. Trust me. You just have to place the given amounts in this format. That's it. That's it. Yes, believe me, it's one of the easiest. So let's not, you know, to devote too much of time to it. Let's move it quickly because this is pretty much a clerical job. Okay. No major calculations or you know understanding of a concept or anything like that. Take the easy. Sure, let's do it. So now let's start with this. Now the format of course will be very clear to you. At the end I will you just you know how to quickly learn the format also. Purchase book in the books of the given person. Right? Here we are making the uh, recording the entries in the books of super fast electronics of Ranchi. Now here in these terms it is important to know where your business is because as we have done GST, yes. GST is applicable based on intra or interstate transactions. So intra is, you should know whether this is intra or it will not be given to you, right? You will have to know the one the given names given in other cases, yeah, intra hai state hai or interstate transaction hai, and accordingly the taxes will be applicable. That's simple. So this person is in Ranchi. What business is he doing? Electronics business. So all electronic items will be goods for him mostly. Right? And other things will not be goods. Okay? Next. We have already discussed the purchase book will record only credit purchase of no cash. Credit purchase of goods only. Nothing else. Nothing else. Right? So when we you know, read the transaction, we have to very carefully read and pick out, you know, usually the sums will include, uh, you know, some transactions which will not, which should not find a place in the purchase book. So you will have to be alert on that and not just put everything that is given to you here. Okay. Now, first one, assume GST to be 12%. GST 12% meaning which GST is this? IGST. If it is IGST, it is 12%. If it, will, it has to be CGST and SGST, intrastate, it will be half. So, half, make it not like 6% and 6%. Okay? Purchase from Videocon, India Limited, Kolkata. Okay. Number one, Kolkata gives me a hint. Ranchi, Kolkata, not in the same state, right? 
सो इंटर स्टेट ट्रांजेक्शन है आईजीएसटी एप्लीकेबल होगा थर्टी कलर टीवीज ऑफ ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड ईच लेस ट्रेड ट्रेड डिस्काउंट टेन परसेंट एंड फ्रेड चार्जेस और ऑफर देर टू थाउजेंड चलो ठीक है तो पहली बात तो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स है गुड्स है नो कैश मेंशन सो क्रेडिट ट्रांजेक्शन है सो टू Then tax. Yeah, IGST. 
तो हम आई जी एस टी के कॉलम में डालेंगे ऑब्वियसली आई विल हैव थ्री कॉलम्स यार फॉर टैक्स सी जी एस टी एस जी एस टी एंड आई जी एस टी फाइन डिफरेंट टैक्सेस डिफरेंट कॉलम्स ईच वन शुड गेट अ ड्यू शेयर ऑफ स्पेस देन हियर द एक्सपेंस ये जो भी एक्सपेंस रहेगा Might not be in all cases, but if you have, please do give. Now, some books say that there is no need to make the freight column or carriage column. But if you refer the council syllabus, the council syllabus very clearly states the in its uh, description the various columns it wants in the purchase book. It wants all of these date, particular invoice number, meaning the bill number. Ledger folio, the page where it will be posted. Details, goods, goods meaning the cost of the goods. Okay, the purchase one. I G S G S T, I G S T, and C G S T. And then freight and carriage, it is very much mentioned there. And then the net invoice, net invoice means the total amount, total invoice. Bill. So, ye council syllabus ke hisab se jayenge. We will not follow any particular book here. Okay. So now. If this is done, we will draw one line, one transaction record. One transaction, समझ में आ गया ना? पूरा purchase book समझ में आ गया. कुछ नहीं समझना और. फिर भी some है तो complete करते हैं. So here, next one, fifteen is the next transaction date. Purchase from Sony Limited, Mumbai. Mumbai मुझे in interest, in interest, interest. Mumbai and Ranchi, right? Two different states. So here IGST again. Now Sony India Limited name of creditor. What have we purchased? Color TVs, ठीक है. Goods है. Credit पे है. So fifteen thousand का है. Ten into five lakh fifteen thousand gives me one lakh fifty thousand total buy. Trade discount minus पंद्रह हजार gone. One lakh thirty five thousand buy. Purchase value. Purchase value इधर आएगा. Then IGST twelve percent off one lakh thirty five thousand. And it comes to IGST account, no freight here, so therefore my total bill value is this. Next one. Next one is on twentieth. अरे ये तो मैं twenty fifth का लिखा twenty fifth का मैंने miss कर दिया क्या? Purchase from Prajapati Furniture. Ten tables at five thousand each, nine percent trade discount. Why did I not write it here? It is a very much credit transaction. But it is purchase of furniture, it's not goods, so we will not put it here. Electronics वाले वो furniture नहीं बेचना होता है. So this is a clear indication that this is not goods. This must have been used for office use. No issues. This will go to journal from. Very good. Not in purchase. So ये नहीं आ रहा है यहाँ पर cross. Hmm. Okay. Next one. Twenty fifth. Purchase from Eastern Sales Limited, Jamshedpur. Wow, Jamshedpur or Ranchi? एक ही state में ना? हम्म, ये geography थोड़ी weak है. So I hope I haven't made a mistake here. So Ranchi and Jamshedpur in the same state. So what will be applicable here? CGST and SGST. Wonderful. So Eastern Sales, Jamshedpur. Five washing machines at the rate of fifteen thousand each. ठीक है. Less fifteen percent credit. So five into fifteen, seventy-five thousand. Then fifteen percent off, seventy-five thousand. Eleven thousand two fifty minus sixty-three thousand seven fifty. ये मेरा cost of goods हो गया, right? On this I apply CGST, but not twelve percent, twelve percent. No mistakes here. Half, okay? Six percent and six percent. So six percent of this three eight two five and six percent three eight two five total is this. Uh, this goes to CGST, this goes to SGST, RGST. कुछ नहीं है, फ्रेड कुछ नहीं है. Total invoice. देख. हो गया. Purchase book ready. बस last का wrapping up बाकी fold कर दो, खत्म कर दो. Okay. So let us see total purchase कितना, purchase cost कितना, purchase account में कितना जाएगा. One, two, three. Add total. इसका कितना uh, tax pay किया CGST this much, SGST. I G S T this plus this this much total है ना okay freight कितना दिया आपने and total bill कितना हो meaning total amount due to be paid to my creditors is this one one two and three three transactions three credit purchase transaction of goods and this is the total of 
creditors. Okay. So given this, I hope the purchase book is very much clear. Just to recap and just to make this format very easy, karna kare. When was it purchased? Date, right? Then we have the particulars. What have we purchased and from whom? Mentioned here. Then we have invoice number, bill number, ledger for you. Those columns. If at all invoice number is given to you, you will have to enter there. Okay, in some sense it might it might be given. Then details meaning working because working ke bina you cannot put into a different amount. So working me kya kare? Cost of goods plus three columns for tax: CGST, SGST, IGST plus. Any freight or cartage or any forwarding expense or counter related expense, and then the total that is net invoice. Format be easy hai, calculation be easy hai, purchase book be easy hai. Full marks on purchase book. Yes. So if this is if this you know sales book be easy. Okay. So please wait for my next video which will be on sales book. Till then you practice and master the purchase book. No cash transaction. No purchase of assets, only credit purchase of goods. So I hope accounts will keep you happy. Stay fit, stay safe. Bye bye.